So this spring, I decided to embark on a 12 week cut in order to lose some weight for the summer. I learned a lot of things about myself. And in this video, I'm going to talk about what worked, what didn't work and what I would do differently if I ever do a cut again. Hello, I'm Tina Hopper. I'm the woman behind Carrots and Cake. I'm an FBM practitioner, a certified nutrition coach, and I love helping women get healthy and achieve their body composition goals. So today I'm excited to dive into this topic because I feel like I knew what a cut was all about, but over the years I've learned so much about how to do it, quote unquote, right and in a responsible way. Because I think when women go into wanting to lose weight, they simply just cut calories exercise more. And I just think there's so much more to the story. And I think you can do it in a much more responsible way and a way that is a lot more enjoyable and sustainable where you do get amazing results because anybody can lose weight. You just crash diet. But the issue here is keeping that weight off, being miserable during your cut, white knuckling every single meal because you can or you can't eat something. I just think mentally it's really, really hard. So I'm gonna share all the details about how I approach my cut, what I learned, because I definitely learned a lot, and some of the things I would do differently if I decide to do a cut in the future. Okay, real quick, just wanna give a shout out to my weekly recaps. I did a weekly recap that you can find in my shorts on my YouTube channel as well as my Instagram account where I recap how the week went, you know, some of the good things that happened, some of the bad things that happened, but you can literally follow this entire cut through all 12 weeks because I really do get into detail about <laughs> what was working, what wasn't working, where I could improve, you know, all those details. So check those out if you really want all of the details. This video is more of a recap of what happened over those 12 weeks. Okay, so let's start with the stats, I guess. You know, what were the results from this 12 week cut? As far as the scale goes, like my actual weight on the scale, I lost just over seven pounds. So pretty pumped about that. You know, that was my goal going into this fat loss phase. I mean, seven pounds in 12 weeks, it wasn't fast, it wasn't and slow. It was kind of what I expected and I was happy with that. But the thing about a fat loss phase is that you can't pick and choose if you are going to lose body fat or muscle because when you are under consuming calories, it affects your body everywhere. You can't pick and choose which is going to be lost. So when you see that number on the scale go down, you are losing fat, yes, is what most of us want to happen, but you're also losing muscle. And then something interesting that happened during this cut that I couldn't control and it was such a bummer is that I hurt my back <laughs> working out and I wasn't able to exercise like I normally do. Like there were points I couldn't even lift up my dog who is 30 pounds. So there is a good part, well, pretty much all 12 weeks where I couldn't work out. I couldn't strength train. And I do think that probably affected my results a little bit. So the reason I'm telling you this is even though, yes, I lost seven pounds on the scale, I also lost just over three pounds of muscle. And that's a key thing during a fat loss phase. Yes, you're trying to be in a calorie deficit, but you also need to strength train. It is really, really important as far as maintaining that muscle. And I do wonder if I was able to strength train if I would have seen less of a loss of that muscle and maybe a little bit more fat loss. I don't know. I don't know how the body works. All I know is that I wasn't strength training during those 12 weeks. And of course, if I embark on a cut again in the future, I will 100% put my effort into strength training. Okay, so let's talk about what I learned, which is a nice segue from what I was just saying about not being able to work out. So I think what I learned here is that the exercise is important for weight loss, but I think it's more the strength training as far as maintaining that muscle. Because I do think if I was in a much better place <laughs> physically, as far as fitness goes, I probably would have added in some cardio towards the end of my cut, maybe some intervals, something like that, just to encourage that fat loss. Because yes, exercising, movement, you know, burning calories, all of that, it is helpful for fat loss. But I do think if you are able to nail the food and ensure that you are in that calorie deficit, you're getting enough protein, you're doing your strength training, you're going to have much better results than just simply 
exercising for two hours a day, just sweating, sweating, sweating. I mean, there's tons of research now that says just doing a bunch of cardio is not good for fat loss, but I do think it can encourage fat loss if you were doing the other things as far as the foundations go. The next thing I learned during this cut is that you don't need to be perfect. And <laughs> I guess I'm getting ahead of myself here, but something I learned also about myself was that 12 weeks was a really long time to do this cut. I mean, it is a quarter of the year. I mean, three months out of the year where you have to be consistent, you have to be on top of your food. And getting back to my previous point here about being perfect, that's a long time to do anything perfect. I mean, to hit your macros every single day, to get your protein in, to do all the things that you need to do with your diet as far as ensuring that calorie calorie deficit. That is a really, really long time. And I can tell you 100%, I was not perfect by any means. I definitely didn't cut out my favorite foods. I was definitely more mindful of what I was consuming. So I was really focused on not having a lot of that like mindless snacking. I feel like that's where all the extra calories in my diet come from because I'm a pretty healthy eater. You know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, I'm eating well-rounded meals. I like to eat healthy meals and I like to eat in that way because of how it makes me feel. Like I'm just really satisfied and my energy is good. My mood is good after eating a balanced meal. But I think where I get a little quote unquote off track is with all the different snackings and treats and things like that. Like I'll have a handful of chips and then I'll have some peanut butter cups from the fridge and then I'll have like a scoop of ice cream before I go to bed. So I think all those little things really added up for me. Not to say that you have to be absolutely perfect. And I actually think not mixing all of your favorite things can actually help keep you more consistent because I think when you are too restrictive with your diet, it makes you feel restricted, which is not fun. But then also I feel like it encourages kind of that binge mode where like when you get around a plate of cookies or brownies or something like that, you can't control yourself. So I was really good about planning those treats into my day. So I was tracking macros through most of this cut. I'll talk about that in a second. But when I was tracking my food, making sure I was hitting my protein goal, I made it a point to enter those treats and fun things that I wanted. So if I knew I was going out for a cocktail with my husband, I would make sure I put that in my tracker before I even you know, had food for the day. I would do it the night before or whatever, but I would account for those things ahead of time because I knew I wanted them and I knew having my favorite foods would keep me on track in the long run. And I think it's better than trying to, you know, track everything and then trying to squeeze in a cocktail or a scoop of ice cream or something like that. So doing it ahead of time really helped me out and it almost kind of like prioritized those treats. So I didn't feel restricted and it was easier for me to make cuts in other places as far as ensuring that I was in that calorie deficit. So you don't need to be perfect, but you do need to be consistent because as I always say, you can't expect A plus results from C plus effort. And I'm gonna give you a few more details about that too. Because yeah, I do think some level of inconsistency can be helpful as far as sustainability goes. But if you do want to lose weight, you need to be in a calorie deficit. So over the course of the week, I think you need to make sure your calorie average is in that deficit to ensure that you're going to see progress week after week. Okay, so let's talk about timing because I think this is like the thing that I learned. So when we work with one-on-one -on -one clients and they have earned their right to go into a cut phase, they are doing a cut anywhere from eight to 16 weeks. Like we typically don't have a cut longer than 16 weeks because we don't want that woman in a calorie deficit for a long period of time because when you under eat, you're not able to build muscle. It can harm your thyroid health, your hormonal imbalance or hormone balance, your metabolism, you know, your metabolism will down regulate to those lower calories. And it's hard to be in a calorie deficit for long periods of time. So when I was going into this, I was like, you know what, I definitely don't want to do the long cut. And then eight weeks, I wasn't sure how much progress I would see in eight weeks. And with eight weeks, a lot of times we do go a little bit more drastic with the calories as far as that deficit goes, just because we want to see results in a shorter period of time. But I also know myself, I don't like restriction. I don't like feeling hungry. So I decided on the 12 week cut, which was kind of in the middle. Now that I've gone through the 12 weeks, 12 weeks is a really long time to, for me to be consistent. And honestly, like the first eight weeks, I was crushing it. I was doing really well. I was tracking. I was hitting my protein goal. I was doing all the things that I need to do and I was seeing progress every single week. So I think if I were to do this again, I would probably do the shorter cut and take more of a drastic approach to that cut because 
the 12 weeks was just too long for me to be consistent. Like honestly, weeks nine through 12, I was doing what I needed to do, but I just wasn't on top of it compared to weeks one through eight. And surprisingly, I still saw progress the last four weeks. I just don't think I saw as much progress as I wanted to see. Like the scale was still creeping down a little bit, but I just think I saw more progress those first eight weeks. So 12 weeks is a long time. So I think going into a cut, you need to know yourself. You need to know what you are capable of when it comes to consistency and ensuring that you are in that calorie deficit. And also, you know, having a start and a stop date, I think that's really, really helpful as far as expectations go, because I committed to 12 weeks. I mean, yes, I put it all over Instagram and social media that I was doing this. So I think that helped me continue those last four weeks. So I was still tracking, I was still hitting my protein goal. I just wasn't as on top of it as I could have been. And then also it was a time in our life where there's a lot of celebrations. It was my husband's birthday, my son's birthday, my dog's birthday, my birthday, Mother's Day, Father's Day. We just had so many celebrations. So also that timing wasn't ideal for my life just because of all the cocktails and cake and all the fun things that go along with those celebrations. So again, just knowing yourself when you can put this cut into your life and then also knowing if you can be consistent with an eight week cut, a 12 week cut, a 16 week cut. I mean, there's definitely pros and cons to the shorter versus longer cut, but knowing myself, I now know that I think the quick and dirty eight week cut would probably be a better fit for me. And, you know, just with the timing, I would probably move it a little bit earlier into the spring instead of having it go right up to almost the end of June, where there were all these different celebrations. Another thing that I learned that I've already kind of touched upon here is that when you go into this fat loss phase or a cut phase, you can't pick and choose if you're just going to lose fat or you're going to lose muscle. And that was very much a concern of mine going through this just because I wasn't able to strength train. And I did an in-body scan. That's where I got these metrics from. But yeah, I lost three pounds of muscle. And it was three pounds of muscle that I worked really hard to gain because prior to this cut, I was in a bulk. I was really focusing on building muscle in preparation for this cut. So it's kind of a bummer that I lost that, but now I decided just to go back to maintenance. I mean, in the perfect world, I would do a reverse diet, but honestly, I never really cut my calories that low because I was so worried about losing the fat. So now that I'm back in maintenance, I'm very, very focused on building muscle, eating enough to make sure I build that muscle and yeah, we're just gonna live and enjoy the summer. Another thing to add that I learned, which might sound a little annoying, but hear me out on this one, is that I didn't think the cut was very hard in the sense that I wasn't that hungry. It really didn't disrupt my life. I wasn't white knuckling it. I wasn't miserable. I wasn't obsessing about food. I was thinking about food for for sure because I was tracking it and really trying to get my protein in. But I think the reason why this cut wasn't so hard was because I really had the foundations down as far as consuming enough protein, sleeping, <laughs> <laughs> managing stress, managing my blood sugar, eating whole foods. I had a lot of those habits already in place. So when I got to this cut, the only thing I really needed to focus on was tracking my food for the most part. I mean, in the perfect world, I would have been strength training too, but I didn't have that. It is what it is. I was injured. So when you have those health foundations in place, it makes a fat loss phase so much easier. And when your health is kind of like out of whack or there's a lot of dysfunction as far as your metabolism, your thyroid, your blood sugar, I just feel like those things are working against you. So, you know, with your blood sugar, if it's out of whack, you're going to have more cravings and energy dips and you're going to feel hangry. And if you have low thyroid, it's going to make it harder to lose weight just because the thyroid slows everything down as far as metabolism goes. If your metabolism is out of whack, it's going to be harder to lose weight because maybe you've been yo-yo dieting your whole life. So I think once you get your health into a really great place and you have those foundations nailed down, all you have to do is focus on being in a calorie deficit, tracking your food, getting your protein, strength training, sleeping, managing stress. I just feel like it makes that cut so much easier. And if your health is really out of whack, I just think it's going to make a fat loss phase 
so much harder and maybe you're going to be miserable and not get the results that you want. And the final thing that I learned is that a cut or like a diet phase shouldn't feel miserable and it doesn't have to. So what I was saying about like not cutting out your favorite foods, I think that's really important as just as far as sustainability goes. And then also I never cut my calories super duper low. I mean, I think the lowest I went was probably 2000 calories, but I think I probably could have gone lower. And if I were to do an eight week cut in the future, I think I would do more of a drastic cut. It's just knowing that I couldn't strength train. I just didn't want to cut those calories so, so low because I wanted to maintain as much muscle as I could. And of course, going into like a deep deficit, you're going to lose fat, but you're also going to lose muscle. And I just feel like where I am in life and not being able to work out, it just wasn't a priority as far as like losing more weight. And I was happy. I was happy with my results. I, <laughs> I kind of got what I expected here. I think if I I had given like a hundred percent effort at the end, I might've saw a little bit more fat loss, but I do wonder if I would have seen more muscle loss and just being 43, I don't want to lose any muscle. Like I really want to make sure I'm continuing to maintain it, maybe even build it into my forties, fifties and beyond just because having muscle is so important for so many reasons when it comes to longevity, your blood sugar, how your body looks, all of those things. And it's just really, really important to me. Okay. So just to wrap up here, 12 week cut was an experience for sure. I'm glad I did it. I learned a lot. I also feel like I got into the minds of our clients a little bit and some of the struggles that they might have as far as consistency goes, strength training, the scale, all of those things. So I honestly think it made me a better coach in that sense. And I'm excited to take some women through cuts in the future. And it taught me a lot about myself as far as Consistency goes, I do think I am able to be consistent, but <laughs> I don't think I can be perfectly consistent for long periods of time, especially when all those fun things come into life as far as celebrations go. And that's another thing where I think maintenance is a really nice place to be. Shout out for my previous videos about maintenance and why it's magical and how to stay motivated during maintenance. But I'm really happy to be in maintenance now that the summer is here. I can enjoy myself and not worry about how, you know, the special treats and things like that are going to affect my results. So if this information information resonated with you and you're interested in possibly working with our team, I would love for you to apply via the link in the notes here. And our approach, I think, is different in the sense that we work with women who are 35 plus, you know, a lot of women who are entering this like perimetopause, menopause phase of life. And they're women who are doing a lot of the things right. They're just not seeing the results that they want and they just need a little help. I just think our approach is very personalized. We make it a point to get to know our clients. And, you know, the more we know about you, the more we can help you. And at the end of the day, we really want to help you come up with a game plan that is going to get you results help you feel confident in what you are doing and help you maintain those results long-term. So if you enjoyed this video, I would love for you to take a second to like it and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss future content.